Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Eli Friedman here from uh, Ashkelon Academic College in Israel, and I'm happy to give a little bit of input to our friends uh, at Arapik uh, about the current uh, situation in Israel, focusing mainly on the domestic political situation, but of course also touching on um, how international relations, foreign policy, the issues of the war uh, are related to these. Um, so as I'm sure all of you are aware, um, our situation in Israel changed drastically with the Hamas terror attack on October 7th. And since then, um, we have been at war with Hamas. Um, and this was the, the worst terror attack in the, in the history of Israel and actually the worst attack on the Jewish people since the Holocaust. So quite, quite unprecedented. Um, there, there had been intelligence about uh, some attack like this being planned, but unfortunately on that specific day, the army was ill-prepared and uh, Hamas was able to overtake certain communities and uh, kidnap um, at the time about 240 Israelis. Since then, some have been released. Um, we're in a very tricky situation now where the direction that um, the war and in general Israel's foreign policy goes is very intimately related to domestic policy, to coalition needs, and to the survival of our Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, Henry Kissinger famous, famously said, uh, this is many, many years ago, I guess about over 40 years ago, uh, I'm paraphrasing, he said that Israel has no foreign policy, but only a domestic policy. And this has been quite true for many years, and it's perhaps even more true today. Um, Israel is facing quite a fateful decision with respect to a hostage deal, a second hostage deal with Hamas, um, that would release hostages, the remaining hostages, probably in two stages. Um, uh, the first stage uh, aiming for a long-term, uh, or uh, uh, about a 40-day stop in the fighting. And there's talks, we're not sure if this will happen, about an actual end of the war um, that would involve the release of the remaining hostages as well as, as dead bodies. Um, now, this is a very faithful issue for Netanyahu because the international community, and particularly speaking about Biden's plan, um, which has been coordinated with several Arab states. This has been uh, written about quite extensively in the New York Times, for example, by Tom Friedman, who is quite close to the Biden administration. So the plan is not only uh, a hostage release plan, but a kind of roadmap for the future of the Middle East um, in which there's a plan to move towards a Palestinian state as well as a reformed Palestinian authority uh, assuming power in Gaza. Very significant um, support, financial support, logistical support by what are called the, the moderate Arab countries and um, possible normalization with additional Arab countries, uh, most significantly Saudi Arabia. So this is a big plan. Um, and I believe that it's based on the international community having a notion that we can no longer let the Middle Eastern conflict, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict specifically, fester and leave it alone and let them do what they want because it can potentially lead to World War III, which actually kind of almost happened in October, but it was prevented. Um, and um, Netanyahu faces a, a very fateful decision that he'll probably have to make in the next week or two weeks. Uh, Biden has talked about that he wants this to happen before the Ramadan um, month, the, the fast month uh, for, for Muslims, um, which is uh, in the first part of March, starts at the first part in the first part of March. And um, the issue is that this has very very um, deep ramifications for Israel's domestic policy, domestic issues, mainly because if Netanyahu were to agree to this, and we don't know if he will, he's keeping all of his options open right now, which he tends to do. If he does this, if he does agree to this plan, 
Um, there's a reasonable chance that his coalition will fall apart, particularly two far right wing parties um, would likely leave the coalition, which would um, probably bring about early elections. If he decides to reject this plan and in a way sacrifice these remaining hostages, right now we're talking about, about I think, 136 hostages, although between 30 and 50 of them have been deemed likely uh, been killed. Um, if he rejects this deal, uh, then uh, there's a chance that the more moderate party of his coalition, the, the National um, Union Party, which only or national unity party sorry which only joined the coalition following october 7th they would likely leave the coalition uh in which case the coalition could still remain intact could still exist with 64 members of knesset um but it would likely become more unstable and the there would be a much more significant public protest um, more recently, uh, public protest has um, expanded demands for early elections based on the fact that Netanyahu is responsible for the, um, the horrible events of October 7th. Slowly, this protest movement has grown over the last few weeks. Um, it's still not at the level of the protest movement that existed during the judicial overhaul, mainly for the reason that Israelis... Um, have trouble taking to the streets and protesting the government when there are so many soldiers um, at war right now. It's deemed as, in a way, anti-patriotic um, by kind of the Israeli ethos. Uh, so the numbers are, are a little bit smaller because of it's a, it's a protest during wartime. However, if the, the centrist party would leave the coalition and Netanyahu would, in a way, abandon these hostages, I'm sure the protest movement would grow significantly. It's important to take into account that Netanyahu's um, popular standing right now is very low. Um, of course, you never know what will happen um, when elections are called, but uh, the polling numbers are, are very negative uh, in terms of his future. Um, he also faces his trial, which makes things even more complicated. So he has his own um, kind of personal reasons to want to stay in power. Perhaps it's more, it's easier for him to face trial as a prime minister than as a private citizen, uh, even though his judicial overhaul plans did not um, come to fruition. Um, One thing that is important to, to point out is that uh, it is deemed by many Israelis that it's simply unheard of that Netanyahu has not taken responsibility for the events of October 7th. And it shows a complete lack of moral integrity. Um, the leaders of the, the, the military and the intelligence community and the, the Shin Bet, the internal uh, intelligence services, have all basically taken responsibility. And at some point when the war ends, they will probably resign from their posts. Netanyahu has not given any uh, indication that he intends to resign. Um, and this has created a lot of public anger. Uh, so Israel is really facing quite fateful um, days in the near future. I don't think that Netanyahu himself knows exactly what he's going to choose. He's often very susceptible to different pressures. And um, unfortunately, his political survival often trumps more um, strategic types of uh, decisions that would need to be made. Um so we will probably see in the next few weeks what Israel's direction is. There is a lot of pressure um, in addition to the domestic um, coalition issue that I that I described earlier. There's going to be a lot of international pressure on Netanyahu to accept this hostage deal or this grander scheme um, from Biden administration. Um, so we'll have to see how that plays out. Netanyahu himself has put forth just a few days ago, a day after plan for Gaza, which actually looks really um, kind of ridiculous because he's he's really just talking about Israel 
uh, maintaining freedom of action and, and military action in Gaza, but in terms of an actual authority, Palestinian um, governing authority, the only thing he mentions here are um, local clan leaders with managerial experience. And this is a complete non-starter. Uh, there's really very, I don't see any local clan leaders deciding to cooperate with, with Israel following all the destruction that has incurred upon Gaza. You need some kind of a political leader with legitimacy. Whether this can be the Palestinian Authority or not, I don't know. But uh, this idea of, of local clan leaders seems completely uh, disconnected from reality and mainly for domestic consumption uh, rather than an actual strategic plan out of this fiasco. Um, I think we'll leave it at that for now. I assume that during the next few weeks, uh, we'll know more. Uh, and I hope that uh, this was informative uh, to you. And we can all hope for better and more peaceful days uh, in Israel, in Gaza, and uh, in the entire Middle East.